Hello, my name is Randy Dixon, and I'm a soil conservationist with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Welcome back to our series, Wetland Conservation Compliance Decoded. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of the three factors that we look into when we investigate whether a particular area is or is not a wetland, and that factor today is plants. We always look at the plant community in addition to the soils and the hydrology of the site in order to determine, again, if we're dealing with a wetland community or not. So for plants, let's start by reviewing what the definition of hydrophytic or wetland vegetation is. We define it as saying a plant growing in water or a substrate that's at least periodically deficient in oxygen during a growing season as a result of excessive water. So in other words, we've got enough water that the whole system becomes anaerobic. There's not enough oxygen left in the system, but plants are adapted to growing in that, and those are typically what we call wetland plants. To help wetland investigators determine if the plant community they're looking at is in fact a wetland plant community, we have a fairly rigorous system that we use. And in fact, we have an entire plant list. And within that list, each plant has an indicator status that's associated with it. So for instance, we have plants that only grow in dry systems, what we call upland systems. And they're rarely, if ever, found in a wetland ecosystem. On the other side of that range, we have obligate wetland plants. Plants that almost never grow outside of a wetland, like this button bush shrub that's growing extensively in this wetland ecosystem that you can see behind me. So there's also then others within that range, again going from upland to facultative upland, those plants that only occasionally would, would occur or show up in a wetland. Then we have facultative plants, which can occur about evenly in non-wetland and wetland systems. Then we have facultative wetland plants, which almost always occur in a wetland, but there are cases where they don't. And then again, the obligate plants like this button bush that occur almost exclusively in wetlands and are rarely found outside of that. So once we've made our investigation, we start to determine whether we have an entire wetland plant community or not. And how do we do that? Well, we differentiate by the tree layer, the shrub layer, and the herbaceous layer, or that layer down at the forest floor, the ground level, and we look at each of those according to their indicator status and we have some mathematical formulas that we run to determine if in fact we have a wetland plant community or not. So it's important to understand that when an NRCS employee comes out and does a wetland determination that their determination on the factor of plants isn't done just by simply looking at a few plants and saying yes these are wetland plants. No, in fact we look at the whole range of plants, we look at the dominant plants within the ecosystem and we use these tools that we have at our disposal to determine if, in fact, again, we're dealing with a wetland plant community. So once again, this has been Randy Dixon reporting today on the plant uh, system as we talk about doing wetland determinations. We hope you'll come back and watch another installment of our Wetland Conservation Compliance Decoded video series. Thanks for watching.